It's time to see if Windows 11 is finally faster than Windows 10. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Chamber here and today I will be showing you if Windows 11 is finally faster than Windows 10 and if you should upgrade in 2023. Now, about a year ago, I actually did do this testing myself, so I decided to do it with Windows 10 and 11 when they first came out. But a lot of things have changed since then. Last year we were on 21H1, major releases for both 10 and 11, and now we are on 22H2 for both 10 and 11. Now, these promise both performance upgrades, mostly for Windows 11, and some other, th and just kind of better features for Windows 11. Windows 10 is basically the same with some like security updates and stuff, but nothing crazy. The reason I decided to do this video was really because I saw a lot of people moving to Windows 11 saying, hey, with my 12th gen Intel CPU, I'm getting better performance. Hey, with my Ryzen CPU, I'm getting performance. And I was like, you know what? Maybe I'll finally retest this. Now, I actually had a theory that I put out on TikTok a, while, a little while ago where I said, I believe that Microsoft is putting better optimizations and performance features only in Windows 11 and nothing in Windows 10. Now it's actually known that some of the newer DX12 libraries and stuff are only going to 11 just to kind of promote the use and upgrade of 11, but I'm not just gonna take someone's word for it, I'm gonna test it myself. So I decided to make two custom OS's, Windows 10 and 11, both made the exact same carbon copies with the same settings. The only difference was Windows 11, I force disabled the need for secure boot and TPM. You can do this also through the setup wizard, but I did it through my NT Lite custom OS just because I hate needing secure boot and TPM when you don't really need it. The only reason you would need it actually is if you were playing Valorant competitively or you're like really like, oh, I need security. Like if you're only crypto on your PC, keep those on. But if not, there's no real need for them. So my test rig was my 12700K. I did run hyper threading off. So I have a live stream. It is the video before this posted and I fully tested hyper threading on and e cores on, hyper threading on, e cores off, e cores on, hyper threading off, and hyper threading off, and e cores off. And I found that hyper threading off with e cores off did perform the best for me still. I'm on DDR4 for this test with 4000 CL15 fully tuned, fully tightened. And then my GPU is the RTX 4090 with running about 3060 megahertz clock speed with plus 1750 on the VRAM. Now the games tested were CSGO. CSGO was mainly just for the DX9, so the older games. I tested Warzone 2 because that's a very popular brand new game. I tested Rainbow Six Siege in Vulcan just because that is another great little Vulcan. We I didn't have any other Vulcan games, so why not use this one? I used Rift Breaker. This is a game, but really it's just a synthetic. I have never seen anyone play Rift Breaker but it's a good little CPU benchmark for you guys. And then for, without further ado, let's get right into the benchmarks. Before we get into the benchmarks, if you want high FPS like you see in this video, I would highly recommend my FPS boost service. Click the link down below, right underneath Booster FPS here, and you can click the link, purchase my service for 100 USD. You know, it's right after Christmas. A lot of people got brand new parts, upgrades, new PCs, and all that stuff. So if you're one of those people and you want a high FPS machine, just like me, feel free to hit that link down below. I will personally overclock it. Make sure that you have the highest FPS possible out of your rig, suggest future upgrades. But now onto the benchmarks. Starting off here with CSGO. So all are at 1440p because that is my monitor and this is such a high end rig that to be honest, even at 1440p, these are CPU bound mostly with some GPU bound titles. But so as you can see with CSGO starting off with a win for Windows 10. Now you're getting about 40 more FPS in the max for Windows 10 and about, um, you know, 20 more FPS, less than 20 FPS more in Windows 11. This is about a 2% difference to be honest, so it's really nothing major. So don't think of this as like, oh, I need to stay on Windows 10. Probably if you're playing Windows 10 on CSGO or Valorant, Valorant typically shows the same performance improvements as Windows, as, um, sorry, CSGO. So think about that probably for Valorant or CSGO, if you're playing those competitively, especially stay on Windows 10. 
Now on to the next one. Here we are with Rainbow Six Siege. And as you can see, this is a win for Windows 11. The Aver the min average and max fps are all significantly higher and as you can see also there is actually a higher use of gp oh sorry there's a yeah higher usage of gpu slightly by two percent and actually the cpu load is less but you get higher fps this is kind of goes back to my belief that gpu um, optimizations and better optimizations are made for windows 11 especially in newer things such as vulcan but now it's on to the synthetics. All right, so here we have Rift Breaker. As, my, as I said before, this is a synthetic. Don't worry, I did not forget about Warzone 2. That'll be the last one for you guys. But as you can see, Windows 11 has higher average FPS at 208 versus 206. Two FPS, that could be literally variance. The same 1% lows there and 112 versus 0.1%. So four FPS difference there. I guess you could say that's margin error. That might be technically a win for Windows 10. It doesn't really matter. But as you can see down there with the GPU and CPU times underneath that, as you can see, the GPU time is 0 0.04 milliseconds faster for Windows 11, but the CPU time is faster on Windows 10. One game I forgot to say because literally it's irrelevant, but as you can see, Windows 10, Windows 11, basically the same thing. As you can see, we're slightly less GPU bound actually on Windows 11, and that's about it. They're the same. Don't really care about this game. Never gonna benchmark it again, to be honest. Now onto the true synthetics, Fire Strike Ultra. This is a 4K DX11 title so, or benchmark, so just fully GPU bound here. And as you can see, the graphics score is basically the same, about 40 points difference, but when you're at 28,000, that's really not much. Um, the physics score is slightly higher, actually, by a, less, by a little over 100 points on the physics for Windows 11, but the combined score is higher on Windows 10. Don't know how that happens because combining them, but you know, at the same time, also, these scores are so high, and as you can see, the actual score itself, 26,208 versus 26,097, is not much. I guess if you want to, you can call this a win for Windows 10, but I'm going to call this a tie. Now, for Time Spy Extreme, as you can see, this is a DX12 4K benchmark, and boom, higher performance for both Windows 11 in every single aspect. Slightly higher graphic score, barely higher, 5 points higher in CPU, so the same CPU performance and you're getting about 30 more points you're getting 30 points more in windows 11 so this is let's say a win for windows 11 but it's really just a tie now onto the big one modern warfare 2 slash warzone 2 now as you can see that is really not that much of a difference when you're looking right at the average fps three percent three per fps but one thing i noticed was that for windows 11 the low first percent so i guess 0 0.1 percent is about is a is 11 fps higher and that's not really what i was worried at i was looking at the gpu performance you were getting 406 versus 425 on windows 11 that is significantly higher as well as both the gpu performance being higher um the low first and the cpu is also higher but the um average and low fifth on windows 11 are slower for the cpu performance You'll also notice actually it is actually more CPU bottlenecked on Windows 11 versus Windows 10. Obviously that is fixed when you have faster RAM like I do now with DDR5. But let's just talk about what I really think. So to be honest, when I first did this benchmarks, here's what I noticed. I noted that Windows 10 had a win for CSGO. That was the only win I said. And then I said for Warzone 2 slash Modern Warfare 2 and Rainbow Six Siege, those were wins for Windows 11. Everything else was so close that it was basically the same performance. So what have we learned here? For most people, to be honest, Windows 10 versus 11 doesn't really matter. If you want to be on the newest one, I'm just going to recommend, hey, go to Windows 11. It's newer. I like the UI a little bit more. But if you like Windows 10 too, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to recommend Windows 11 for everyone now. If you are on my service and you're wanting to do a Windows reinstall, I'm going to say, hey, go to Windows 11 just because I like it personally. But if you guys enjoy this video, hit the like button down below. Subscribe if you guys are new. 
Hope you guys have enjoyed, and I'll see you later. Peace.